Hey guys, my name is Frank and this is the Pothon Programming Video Log and today I'm going to be showing you how I do sprite animation in JavaScript and HTML5. So I made this little example with this little dude and he walks around, he can jump and stuff. And if you look closely, you can see that he's actually animated. So what is happening here is a bunch of still images are being presented in quick succession to give the illusion that he's moving. So as you can see, I've got my sprite sheet over here and all the, all the different animations are only two frames long, keep it simple. So this one here that he's doing now is just these first two frames. So you can think of these as having tile indexes in the sprite sheet or frame indexes. So this will be index zero, this will be index one, two, three, four, five, and each one of those numbers correlates to the image that it falls over. So if you could actually see the graphic here, it's only 16 pixels high by whatever 16 times six is, which is I think 72. I don't know. But anyway, how this works is with some JavaScript, and I'm just going to jump right in and show you the JavaScript. So I created an animation object here that I can instantiate with the new operator. So this is technically the animation class, I guess you could call it. And I have a couple different variables here. I have the count, I have the delay. Those basically just keep track of how many cycles of my game loop have passed since the last time an animation was updated or a new frame was placed in the animation. Frame is the value in the sprite sheet. That's what I was talking about before. So frame, say frame is equal to zero, it would represent this image right here. If it's equal to two, it would represent this image right here. If it's equal to three, it would be this image right here. So frame is what we're actually going to hand into our drawing function to cut the image out of this tile sheet and draw that image onto our final canvas image. So after that we have frame index and frame set. So the frame set is where our animation frame values actually reside and frame index is the index that we're currently in inside of the frame set. So like I was saying, this right here, these first two, that's a frame set. These two, that's a frame set. The next two are also a frame set. So the frame set is just an array. So for the first animation that you're seeing here, the frame set would just be zero. It would be an array with zero and one as the values inside. And if I'm walking to the right, the frame set would be two and three. So it's just an array with the frame values inside. The index is just the, the current location of the playhead. I guess you can think of it that way. It's the current location of the frame head inside of the frame set. Frame is the final value. Count and delay just keep track of how long it's been since the last time we updated our frame. So these variables right here are what we're going to use to actually do the animating. So before I go over the rest of this, I'm going to come down into my game loop. And before I do that, we can see the player here has a new animation object. I didn't give it any parameters yet. I think I actually do that at the bottom. Maybe I don't. I haven't actually looked at this code in a little while since before Christmas, and it's the new year, so it's been a week or two. So anyway, this is my, my sprite sheet object that keeps track of my image, my sprite sheet image, and the frame sets. So I just have a big array of frame, frame sets and each one is an individual frame set. So like I was saying, zero and one, that's just the idle animation. Two and three, four and five, those are the, the right and left walking animations. And here we have the game loop. So inside the game loop, we are actually going to get controller input and we're going to change our animation depending on which key we press. So say we press the left key, we're going to change the animation to the, the frame set for the left moving animation, which is apparently at location two in the sprite sheets objects frame set array. And I also pass in a value for the delay that we're gonna be using. So now I'm gonna come down here and do a little bit of collision detection. And we call the player.animation.update function. So animation.update keeps track of what the current count is, test that against the delay. If I come down to the update function here, we can see that on every frame of our game loop, this 
function is going to run. So all this function does is it increases the count by one. It tests to see if the count is equal to the delay. And you could also say if count is greater than or equal to this dot delay, that's probably smarter just in case you're, you go past your delay somehow if you're manipulating your count value to do something specific with your animations. Just to be safe, that's a good idea. Uh, this dot count set it back to zero every time we update our animation and we actually switch from one frame to another. We want to set count back to zero so we can wait that full delay again. This dot frame index, here we're setting the frame index inside of the frame set. So remember, a set of frame set would just be a set of values, so zero and one. So the frame set would just be an array with zero and one inside of it for this animation right here. So frame index is kind of like our playhead. So when we update our animation, we're going to check to see if count is greater than or equal to delay. If it is, we're going to move our frame index one step forward inside of our frame set array. Now, if the index is past the length of our frame set array, we're going to set frame index back to zero. And then we just take our current frame value from that. So the frame value would be one or zero. The frame value here would be one. We'd go past the end of our array, our frame set array that only has two values in it. And we'd set frame index back to zero and we'd get that frame value back again, which would be zero in that case. So all this is doing is just, it's a compound if statement it's just saying, if the frame index is currently equal to the last frame in the frame set, then the next value we're going to give it is zero. So that will start it back at the beginning of the frame set. And if not, we add one to the frame index, that's going to set it to the next value in the frame set. And then we just get the value of the frame itself and we store that in frame. And that's just going to be this right here. We're just going to get the value from the frame set at the current frame index, and that's going to be our frame. So now what do we do with that? I'm going to come down to the draw function if I can remember where it is. I think it's down here. Render. Yup. So how do we get the image from the sprite sheet with that frame value information? Well, in this case, it's pretty easy because our sprite sheet is just columns. There's only one row, so we don't have to worry about rows and columns. We just worry about the row location or the column location rather. So we hand draw image our sprite sheet image, which is this right here. And then we get the frame, the player's current frame of animation that we just received from the update function, just changed it from the update function. We multiply it by sprite size, which is 16. So let's say our player's animation frame is zero. Zero times 16 is zero. That's going to put us right here. And we know the the size of each sprite is 16 by 16, so we just cut out that area. So say I have a frame value of 2, 0, 1, 2. I know the dimensions are 16 by 16, so I just cut this 16 by 16 rectangle out of the image. So it's actually really simple, and I'll just I'll scroll over the code here so you can see what's going on. I hand draw image my sprite sheet. Um, I handed the X location to cut from the sprite sheet the Y location, which is always going to be zero because we just have one big row. Then I handed the size, which is 16 by 16. That's the size of sprite size. And then I tell it the location on the final canvas to actually draw to. So player.x and player.y, and then the sprite size remains the same. And then down here, all I'm doing is I'm scaling up my buffer to fit the size of the canvas because like always, my application has to scale to fit multiple devices because we're doing HTML5 and that's a browser language. So we want to make sure our image fits on all different types of screens. All right, so the only other thing really, well, this is kind of cool. I just, I made this cloud background here with this code here. I'm not gonna go into it, but that's what that does. The only other thing I'm gonna talk about really is the change function, if I can find it. I think I may have gone too far. Nope, here we go. This is why I should do the videos right after I make the uh, the example because I tend to get lost in the code when I haven't visited it in a while. So, but anyway, this is the change function. 
basically what this does is you call it when you're changing your animation from one frame set to another. So if I hit the left key, I'm gonna change my animation to the left walking animation. If I hit the right key, I'm gonna change it to the right walking animation. And how I do that is with the change function. So if I come down to loop, and I look at my different controller input handlers, so this is for the left key press, I'm calling the change function on the player's animation object, and I'm telling it to get the frame set at location two in the sprite sheet's frame sets array, and that's just the animation for walking left. It's just those frame values in the array. Uh, 15 is the delay. If I were to change this to one, he's gonna be walking really, really fast. Let's see what that looks like. Refresh my screen right here. Oh yeah, he is going really, really fast. And we can actually see that request animation frame is actually not running as smoothly as you might think with those jitters in there. But let's change it to something that actually looks a little more reasonable, like eight, and see what that looks like. Now he's really going for it. He's really running now. And over here we got just the nice regular update every 15 frames. That's eight frames. So you can control the delay. You can, you, can, you can make this a little bit better and have a delay set for every frame of animation, but I didn't think that was necessary for this tiny example. I mean, if you fiddle with the code a little bit, you can, you'll find that you can do a whole lot. You can do basically anything. It's your program. But for this example, I just figured it'd be, it'd be sufficient just to show uh, a single delay for all the frames in each animation set. But basically, I'm calling the change function when I'm giving controller input. So when I walk to the left, I'm changing it to the left animation. When I'm idling, when I'm not pressing left or right, I'm just going to change the animation to idle. And when I go right, I'm changing it to right. Now, the reason that this doesn't fire every single time, because obviously, if I hold the, the left key down, I'm going to call the change function every single time. So the reason that it's not resetting the animation and, and clamping my player's frame at the first frame in the frame set is because there's an if statement inside of my change function. If I go up here, I'll show you that real quick. If I can actually find it, where is it? It's right here. But there's an if statement inside of my change function that just says if this dot frame set, so if the current frame set of my animation object is not equal to the parameter frame set, then we're actually going to change animation. So when I call that change function multiple times from uh, when I press the left key and I first change my animation from idle to walk left, this is going to be true because my current frame set is not going to be equal to the new frame set and I'm actually going to change my frame set. And on subsequent calls to this function, it's going to it's going to detect that the frame, the current frame set is actually equal to the frame set I'm trying to change to, and it's not going to execute any of this code. There's probably more efficient ways to do this, but once again, this is just an example to show you guys a basic way of how to do it, and it works pretty well. I don't think I'm like killing my CPU by having this slightly inefficient code here, but it works pretty well. So, And basically what we do here is we set count equal to zero, we set delay equal to the delay that we hand in, and I have a default value set for the delay parameter of 15 because that seems to work pretty well. I mean, that looks pretty smooth to me. I mean, choose whatever you want though. So we, we set count to zero and delay equal to the new delay. We set the frame index to zero, that's gonna be the new playhead position inside of our frame set. Um, we set the frame set equal to the new frame set. And finally, we set the frame equal to the new value that we get from the new frame set at the current frame index. So that's kind of a mouthful, but if you just look at it, it all makes sense. And if you fiddle around with it, go to my GitHub page, get the source code, and you'll see that it all makes really good sense. And it runs really well, I think. So, <clears throat> excuse me. And that's it, I think. I think I've covered pretty much everything. This example program here really isn't that long. There's a ton of white space in code and it's only 272 lines. So condense that down and things are gonna be pretty simple to look at. So this is where I initialize the program. Uh, figured I'd show you this just because I'm loading the image and before I actually kick off the 
loop, the game loop, I have to make sure that my image is fully loaded. So in order to do that, I'm just setting the sprite sheet dot image source. That's the image object inside of my sprite sheet object. I'm setting the source equal to the URL of my animation PNG. So this image right here. And then I'm adding a load event listener to that image to test to see is that image loaded? If it is, then we kick off the game loop by just saying window dot request animation frame and we hand it the loop function. And that's it. This is the whole example here. I hope you guys learned something. Uh, definitely, if you have questions, ask them in the comments below. And stay tuned for the next video. I'll see you guys next time. Mm -hmm.